There's a lot of circuits that I have as well on my uh, YouTube channel that are follow along. So a lot of people on a daily basis, they can go back to my YouTube channel and uh, they can see all these uh, workouts that they can do at home in the living rooms and the park or whatever. And with a lot of clients, I work just in this way, not having any equipment. So today I can show you some exercises that are usually the most uh, effective for clients to do at home based on different areas of the body that they want to target. A lot of people are interested in having chest and having abs and having good arms. So we go and cover maybe some four or five exercises that are really intense and are really specific for that. And then all the other YouTube uh, videos that I made, they can implement on some regular exercise that people do like jackknives and push-ups and all of that. But I want to make sure that you guys include these exercises I'm going to show you now because these are the ones that actually create that extra detail on that muscle. So yes, and the link for the channel, the link for Diego. Uh, people, YouTube people channel. can look at Diego Secchi on my on my on YouTube, and um, it's included in the YouTube description, so people would that's... not need to uh, worry about where they can find it. So we got like a mat here. We try to fit in my living room because it's not very big, but I, I guess that if I'm doing exercise here, you can see me, right? I'll show you, take my shirt off. And, it uh, also uh, shows that this can be done from home. This is in the living room, guys. The best way to do it, you're just in a, in a yoga mat, some stuff we're doing like uh, standing up, like jackknives or whatever, but that's normal, a lot of people do it. I wanna show you like some variants of some push-ups that are very interesting for people because they always be talking about their chest in the mat, they usually do that. So- Yeah, you can come closer to the camera if you wish. Let me see if we, if we put it here. Yeah, yeah, because we're doing this, you see? So uh, yes, move the man. And, yeah. This is great, I guess, like a great angle. You, you you just learn how to work the angles when you do home workouts. Yes. So, yeah. so basically, it's all about uh, the handstand. So usually people just do some push downs and they, they just try and do this, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is that here, we firstly work in a lot of our shoulders and triceps and we're not really targeting the chest because a lot of people tend just to think about how I'm lifting my body now, so I have to go through the effort. But your chest is not really engaged unless you actually close your shoulder blades and keep it there. So we start closing our shoulder blades and then we get a nice stance. And then we go down and you can see how it's actually pumping differently. You see the details on my chest here? Instead of someone just pushing up from here. Uh -huh. Boom, you see? The chest is completely different. You can see on the camera as well, the details on my chest come out here. You got striations and stuff. Where here, I'm just using my shoulders. So that's one quick tip that people need to use when they actually work on their chest. You need to actually close your shoulder blades. Secondly, it's all about how you pull your hands. So here, we're working on this outside area of your chest. But if we're actually getting closer and put you on a diamond, shape that that's why they call it sometimes you put it here and then you start working more in your inner part of your chest and that's why a lot of people love you know to have a, like a really nice separation of your chest but they can't get it because they just develop this area usually so if we do like on a diamond shape stance we put it down put on your hands and then again shoulder blades and then we go down and breathe out and squeeze and this is how your chest is working a lot more Third yes. thing, we can actually go very wide. And this is again, it's working on this area, the one that is connected to the shoulder. So if we're going really wide here, it's a bit harder because we need to get used to it. Your hands or your finger might actually point outwards if you want to get more stability. And then again, shoulder blades, close. And that's how you do your chest. So I really uh -huh. recommend to do all of these different hand position and still keeping your blade, your shoulder blades close. And this is something that you can do as well when you go back to the gym. Question for you, Diego, how close to the floor you go? It depends on how you're feeling, because here we talking about uh, different ranges of motion that people might have. So if I had an injury before, if I'm not really stretchy let's say because i haven't stretched for a while or maybe like i'm a bit older and stuff of course your joints are not as uh, stretchable or as movable as some other people that maybe include their motility as well routine during 
during the week or some stretching routine. So you have to go as far down as you feel that your chest is working. So if I'm going down here and feel it, if I go too low, then it's actually touching my shoulders now and my triceps and I'm losing that focus on my chest. So it's very personal, the level at which we go down to the floor. But at the same time, it's all about feeling the muscle. So here I'm still feeling it, I'm still feeling it. Here I'm losing it. So that, that's when I go back up. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to get used to the movement and then you slowly understanding where's your point to come back up. And that changes with different like, hand positions and stuff. But at the same time, it makes you more aware of what you're doing. And this is like how you gain experience in training. You know, there's no weights here. So it's not about, hey, I'm lifting more than you or whatever, but it's about how I'm connecting to my muscle more than some other people. And every single time you're doing this workout, you create that muscle-mind connection that is very important and makes your workout more effective. Heard the expression, think as if there is a pencil between your two shoulder blades and you're trying to hold this pencil. Yeah, that, 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 can, be, that can be something good to, for people to remember because of course then they think about, oh, I, I cannot let this pencil fall. So yes. they focus on that. But secondly, they need to bring their focus on their chest. So otherwise it will stay on their back all the time and then they're not working or they're not thinking about the muscle they're working. So firstly, it's good to think about that. Even when they sit down on a chair, they sit down and they actually have that feeling. But secondly, they need to bring their focus from and then try and do some push-ups. So here's one thing. And uh, secondly, a great thing about abs this time, because abs are so important for people. And I saw that uh, some of the guests of yours showed some uh, abs exercises and it's a big thing because people, while at home, while on the floor, the first thing they think about is, hey, let's do some abs. So usually what people do is that they do a lot, a lot, a lot of crunches, mm -hmm. but usually they're just pushing their legs and neck all over the place and they're not really focusing on the contraction. So what I say to people is that think about your abs lifting your whole body. So I'm not just pushing here, my legs and my arms has to come up, but I'm using my abs to contract. So I'm just flexing and I'm coming up with my body. You see, I, can't, I, I don't do anything. I don't shake, I don't wave, I don't do anything with my arms. These are actually steel and these are steel. And then I come up. And what I'm doing is that I'm breathing out and I'm breathing through the abs. So breathing is so important. And I say this to people, whenever you come up, you breathe out as much as you can until you empty your lungs. So it can be four seconds for some people. It can be six seconds for other people, but that gets you right into the abs and the squeeze of the muscle because abs are like a weird muscle it's not just like any other muscle it's getting the feeling of really getting into that kind of muscle cramping sometimes that you feel because it's a really hard muscle and it's involved in our respiration all day so it's a very strong muscle so we can't work it normally as some other exercises where a lot of people do a lot of reps so here if you do it effectively i can assure a lot of people down at home that they can do five to 10 reps maximum, and then they're done. I always go to failure first, so it's always good to go to failure. Secondly, I come up, breathe out, and I keep breathing until I'm done. And then, once I can do it anymore, slowly come down, release, breathe in, and then we go at it again. I'm doing this with a lot of clients, and that turns out to be like the best abs workout they ever done, and they say, oh, I've been training for 10 years and I never actually trained abs the right way. So it's very important to breathe through it. And once you have the proper breathing, then you can do any sort of exercise with your abs because you know how to do it. So a lot of people might do even like fancy stuff right now. They like on a plank and they just like squeezing their abs or whatever. But if I know how to breathe through my abs, then it would be and I hold it instead of just moving around. So it's very important to focus on what you're doing instead of just doing it for the sake of it. We're not here to finish fast. We're here to make it count. Four or five crunches, that's all what they need if they do it the right way. Yeah. Can you do it again? I just want to highlight something. Yeah. Your leg position, it, does it matter if it is, yeah, like this I, or? I hold like this just as a balance point of view, as a balance perspective, because if, uh -huh. I, if I release and I go down a little bit, I don't yeah. want my feet to touch the floor, otherwise I'm resting where if they're holding up, then this is always under tension. So that's why I keep them like this, because here I can squeeze, and then I go down, 
as much as I can. I'm releasing my abs, I'm stretching, I'm not touching the floor. And then again, coming up. So this is just general. A lot of people can do this. A lot of people can, can, can do this, you know, as well. But here, I'm not having any uh, focus on my legs. A lot of people, if they do this, all these muscles are under tension and that's not what we want. We're actually focusing on our abs now here. So, yeah, and down again. Thank you for sharing this because many, including myself, keep the legs on the floor and that is not the best way. No, because if you lift them up from the floor, they already engage, like this lower abs part is already engaged and it gives a lot of extra stress on the muscle. So you're actually working more in less time and that's what we all want and make it effective at the same time. So, so this is, yeah, these are some you know, uh, things that I wanted to share with you. These are like very valuable tips, I think, because yes. I can go on and do like normal exercises, but at the same time, a lot of people do those exercises all the time, even like squatting and all of that. They just do normal squatting or whatever. This mm -hmm. is fine, but at the same time, all these little things are the details that we need to look at. So even mm -hmm. thinking about like a simple squat just for, for, for a second, you know, a lot of people just go down and come up again, whatever. But there's a lot of things that you need to focus on. So is the angle of your hips. Some people might have it tighter than others. Some people might have like a really hard time going down. So it doesn't matter if you go down like this or if you go down like this, you just don't need to bend your back. So as long as your back is straight, then you go down in the angle that you feel more comfortable with. And if it's harder for you to go down, you can start wider and then you start closing it apart. And the wider we go with our legs, the more we work on the inner tights and our glutes. But then the closer we go, the more we work on our quads over here. So you can see these, this is called ventral lateral. And so this is actually the lateral, the side part of our quads that are actually working more. But at the same time, if we're doing this, then you see that we're working more on the inner thighs. So again, it's still the normal exercise, it's still squatting, but we can do a massive uh, difference just changing our feet position so this is what it's important out there you know that's why i love studying at, at uni i took a lot of physiology a lot of uh, biomechanics because you really need to know how to do the, the exercise in a in the right way in a proper way to have full benefits otherwise we're just wasting time so that's why a lot of times clients come to me and they say okay diego i've been training i know what i have to do but I still want you to design my training because I really want to get 100% out of it. Because I go there, I know it's working because I feel my body working, but I'm not still 100% sure that this is the perfect plan for me. So I design a way, I design in a way where you know that if you go to the gym, this is the best you can do for your own physique and at the best level of intensity and number of reps and sets and type of exercises and all of that that comes with it. So we maximizing our time while training. 